I've always found, you know, that my career has not just been here. My career started down here as well. And it's, it's just a fact that I learned on my feet. I learned how to think, I learned how to speak. All those things are relative to you people in this room. You know, how many times have you listened to yourself talk? Some people will tell you that you talk too much or you talk a lot. But just listening to your own voice sometimes is a good way of looking at, well, how do the kids understand what I'm saying? What am I actually saying? Do I mumble? Do I, do I sort of, I'm a specific, am I, I'm a sort of aggressive, you know, we have some people have aggressive tones, it's just the way they speak with voices. Some are quite soft. But there's a learning session in there for you as coaches. Try not to run before you can, you can walk. You know, you're all probably working through different levels, at different scales, and you're all pushing to probably be better. But what I found at grassroots is more some of you will find a level that you're really comfortable at working at. You might want to aspire to be a professional coach, that's great. There's a mechanism to get you there through your FAs and what have you. But at grassroots, find a level and use your ability in the level. Because that's where the satisfaction is. Seriously. Because as you move up, it's far more challenging. I mean, I've done sessions, we've been on the road a few weeks now, and I've done sessions of eight-year-old girls where that was really challenging for me. I was outside my comfort zone there. Really challenging, especially when it was difficult for them to, to move the ball and run the ball, but we got there in the end. Then I moved on to 19s, 20s, 21, it's a bit edgy. You know, there's a bit of character there and there's a little bit of, little bit of uh, what can you say? Well, they were pretty nitty gritty and, and what have you, and trying to impress me. I don't know why they were trying to impress me, because I was trying to just give them some feedback. But then you've got to be a different type of person. So there's a lot as a grassroots coach to take on board. And also, it's your time. You know, you don't get paid for this. I get paid for it, but you don't get paid for it. And it's time and energy and planning comes into it. There's a lot of things you have to plan. But I generally, and you'll see this today, I generally think on my feet at this level. So I have an idea in my head and I'll run with it. And you'll see me today, I'll start with something pretty simple, simple basic, so I can see the level. I don't know what that level is. So I want to see the level and then I'll progress it from there. I have things in my head, but I will, I will move it on, but I may also stop it and not go the whole way. That's just the way I put it. If something's good, I work on that. One of the things I, I always say, and this might be contradictory to what, you, uh, what you're trying to do at, at this level, but certainly the pro level, I work on strengths and not weaknesses. I have the time for the weaknesses, simply because by the time I have them, they should have a lot in their locker to be able to, to work. You guys will have to probably look at weaknesses, but if you concentrate on weaknesses too much, you will never move forward, you will never move on. So when you've got a group of kids, whatever age, analyze that, see what they've got, and encourage that. Really encourage that, drive that all the time, and you'll get the feedback from them. If you start looking at the negatives, and you start looking at the things you can't do, you ain't got a session, you ain't got, you ain't got time for all that. So look at the, for me, look at the positives, look what they've got and what they can do, and you'll get the feedback and enjoyment from them.